Hi, Peter Johns here, emergency physician with a keen interest in teaching others how to evaluate patients with vertigo. Using a real case I saw just four days ago, I'm going to go through how to evaluate the patient with acute vestibular syndrome, how to first screen for central features, and then use the HINTS Plus exam to reliably diagnose vestibular neuritis and safely send these patients home. First, of course, the history should be consistent with the acute vestibular syndrome. And this seven-year-old woman got out of bed that morning and felt very dizzy, which was worse with head movement, somewhat better when still, but never completely resolved. She had vomited and had some difficulty with gait, but was able to walk unaided. A quick glance at her eyes showed this. Horizontal nystagmus with a fast component beating to the left. So that certainly fits the definition of the acute vestibular syndrome. Now the question is, does she have vestibular neuritis, which is more likely, or is she having a posterior circulation stroke, which is less likely? So the next step is to screen the patient for central features which would not be seen in vestibular neuritis, such as new significant headache or new neck pain, which would be concerning for cerebral or hemorrhage or vertebral artery dissection, and typical stroke symptoms such as focal paresthesias or weakness, and then the posterior circulation symptoms, the so-called dangerous Ds, dysarthria, diplopia, dysphonia, dysphagia, and dysmetria. Here's her arm examination for any dysmetria, such as past pointing or other ataxic movements, and her legs also showed normal movement and no ataxia. And you should always test the patient with acute vestibular syndrome for their ability to walk. And as I said, she could walk unaided, but definitely had some difficulty doing it. And also look for spontaneous vertical nystagmus. Our patient didn't have any, even when looking up, as I'll show you in a second. However, this patient did have spontaneous vertical downward nystagmus, and that almost always means that the patient has a central cause for their vertigo. But of course, remember that positional vertical upward nystagmus is seen during the dix hall pike test, as in this patient with posterior canal BPBV. If you find any central features in your patient with acute vestibular syndrome, then the HINTS Plus exam is basically irrelevant, because you should work them up for stroke. But if they screen negative, as most patients will, you still can't say for sure that it's only vestibular neuritis unless you perform the four components of the HINTS Plus exam. All four components must have a peripheral result in order to call the overall HINTS Plus exam peripheral. The first component you look at is nystagmus. A spontaneous nystagmus must be present in order to apply the HINTS Plus exam. If your patient does not have nystagmus, don't do the HINTS Plus exam, as HINTS Plus was not studied on patients without nystagmus. Now back to our patient who sure did have nystagmus, but let's look at it more closely. Looking straight ahead, it's horizontal with the fast component beating to the left. When she looks to the left, the magnitude of the nystagmus increases. When she looks to the right, it decreases, but it's still beating to the left. There's no vertical nystagmus when she looks up. This is a hints plus peripheral result and the kind of nystagmus typically seen in vestibular neuritis. There's a slight rotational component to the left as well, which you can appreciate by looking at the vessels on her conjunctiva. If she has vestibular neuritis, then her affected ear would be her right ear. But if you saw this, the nystagmus changing direction depending on which direction the patient was gazing, that would be a hints plus central result. Next is the test of skew. There's no vertical or diagonal movement seen so another hints plus peripheral result. If you saw this, vertical or diagonal movement, that would be a hints plus central result. On to the most important way to confirm a diagnosis of vestibular neuritis, the head impulse test. When her head is turned rapidly to the left, there's no catch-up saccade seen. When her head is turned rapidly to the right, you do see a catch-up saccade. The catch-up saccade is in the same direction as the nystagmus, that is to the left, but clearly of greater magnitude than the resting nystagmus. Here again, normal to the left and abnormal to the right. That's the important hints plus peripheral result you need to see to make the diagnosis of vestibular neuritis. If you saw a normal head impulse test when testing both left and right sides, that would be a hints plus central result. Lastly, the plus part of the HINTS Plus exam. Her bedside test of hearing with the finger rub test was normal on both sides. Do you, can you hear, do you hear me, do you hear a noise there, yeah? Over here? Yeah. Okay. That's a HINTS Plus peripheral result. 
A new loss of hearing in a patient with acute vestibular syndrome is a hints plus central result as this is concerning for an anterior inferior cerebellar artery stroke where the cerebellum and the end organs of balance and hearing are infarcted. So in summary, to diagnose this patient with acute vestibular syndrome as vestibular neuritis, which is more common, but could have been a posterior circulation stroke masquerading as vestibular neuritis, I first needed to screen her for central features that would put the diagnosis of vestibular neuritis in doubt. Then, as she did screen negative, I used the HINTS Plus exam to demonstrate nystagmus that doesn't change direction with gaze, there was no vertical diagonal skew, she had an abnormal head and pulse test when her head was turned away from the fast direction of nystagmus, and a normal bedside test of hearing. As all four components of the HINTS Plus exam were peripheral, the overall HINTS Plus exam was also peripheral, likely vestibular neuritis. So I discharged her home with a limited supply of an antiemetic so she could eat and a referral to vestibular rehab to help with her recovery. We're lucky enough to have two smart and dedicated physicians, one a head and neck surgeon, the other a neuro-ophthalmologist, who will see these patients in follow-up. Of course, she was cautioned to return if she developed any central features. I spoke to her today on the phone, four days after I saw her, and she said she's 95% better already. No vomiting and just some nausea. If she had screened positive for any central features or had a central result to any of the four components of the HINTS Plus exam, this would have mandated further assessment for a central cause of acute vestibular syndrome. So when are you ready to use the HINTS Plus exam to diagnose somebody with vestibular neuritis in acute vestibular syndrome? Well, first of all, you should know the definition of acute vestibular syndrome. You should know how to screen for all the central features I listed. You should know the HINTS peripheral and HINTS central results of the four components of the HINTS Plus exam. And you should have produced an abnormal head and pulse test in someone with acute vestibular syndrome. You should have had a vertigo champion watch you do the HINTS Plus exam to make sure you're doing it correctly. If you think that's too onerous, what exactly is your strategy for these patients? Do you do an MRI on all of them? MRI can miss 10 to 20% of strokes in the first 24 to 48 hours. So take notes on all of this, and next time you see a patient with acute vestibular syndrome, try this approach, but keep your normal pattern of practice until you've satisfied all the things I just mentioned. With a little practice and experience, you'll soon be looking forward to seeing these vertigo patients. Thanks for watching. Hey, I almost forgot, I've got other videos too. For instance, I've got one on tips on how to do the head impulse test and a whole bunch of abnormal examples or my take on TIAs or why you don't do the uh, HINTS exam on someone who doesn't have nystagmus or also one that has a whole bunch of abnormal Dix-Hallpike tests. So give us a watch and tell me what you think. Take care everyone.